Welcome to Voice of the Vatican, our top stories. World Youth Day. It may be over, but the spirit of the amazing international event that attracted over one million young people to Krakow lives on. And we'll speak to young pilgrims about how this experience of the faith has changed their lives forever. Tunnel of Hope. On Switzerland's National Day, Swiss bishops deliver a message of unity in an icon of the country, the St. Goddard-based tunnel in the Swiss Alps, the world's longest and deepest traffic tunnel. Latin American Martyrs Day. Servant of God, Archbishop Enrique Angeleli of Argentina is remembered by the faithful on the 40th anniversary of his murder. Fighting illiteracy. The Coptic Orthodox Church mobilizes to fight this grave problem plaguing more than a quarter of Egypt's population. Good sportsmanship. The Holy Father sends a message of hope to athletes and spectators in advance of the Brazil Olympics. Brutal attack. A priest in Belgium attacked by an asylum seeker as he was offering the man hospitality. Mountain pilgrimage. 20,000 people in Ireland take to the heights and climb Crow Patrick, many of them barefoot, trotting where St. Patrick once spent 40 days and nights. The gift of love. A summer camp in Italy sponsored by the Order of the Knights of Malta gives disabled youth the chance to enjoy some good old summer fun. I'm Ashley Narona in Rome, Italy, and you're watching Voice of the Vatican, only on Shalom World TV. If anyone ever tells you young people are apathetic about their faith, you can tell them about World Youth Day, where over one million young people gathered in Krakow for five joyful days, dedicated to expressing a shared love of Christ and His Holy Church. We caught up with some young pilgrims who experienced their very first World Youth Day in Krakow, who told us the experience has changed their lives forever. The most special thing to me, I think, seen there was the clash of cultures, seeing different people from all walks of life come together and uh, celebrate one thing together and all have something in common. Even after it was all over, the words of the Holy Father continue to resonate in young hearts, especially those concerning the powerful impact that youth can have in the life of the church. The youth have an important role in the church. We can't just be sitting around playing video games or watching TV, being couch potatoes. We need to have we need to be active in our faith. And I, I feel like that really touched me when he spoke to that, because he not, it not only felt like he was speaking to everyone there, but it felt like he was speaking to me directly. Recently, I had been struggling with courage for the faith, and especially during adoration with the Pope on the night of the vigil. We, um, during adoration, I just felt that I was able to gain courage for the faith, and that this would be a faith that I would suffer and die for. During their time in Krakow, Pilgrims visited holy sites and fostered new friendships along the way, all the while gaining an up-close understanding of the universality of their faith. The number one that hit me right away was the amount of youth my own age that related through one holy apostolic Catholic church. I've never seen that from so many different cultures all around the world, so many different languages, but we were, relate we were relatable for three aspects, the Holy Mass, uh, music and just genuine love. So my friend and I play instruments and throughout the concerts the whole trip uh, we were able to find other Catholic guys our own age from all around the world. We didn't speak the same language but we all played music. We all had this passion as people and the Holy Mass was just incredible. We all understood no matter what language and that was very surprising. It was a couple million people never experienced that in my life and I w I'll never forget that. I think the really cool thing about the different people I met at World Youth Day is that we were all so different, but through the, our faith, we were each the same. Like, we were talking to different people that we passed by as we were walking. So we can be talking to people from France or Germany, or we can be talking from people who were down the hallway from Ohio, um, USA. And we would all just be talking to each other about our different paths um, in our lives. 
And it was really cool to see how um, the different cultures came together through our one faith. Well, for me, it was definitely the Mass at the end because I loved how everybody from different places came together for that one Mass, and it just shows that our church is one universal church, so I really liked that. Some Polish people we met, we didn't know them, but we started singing with them before we even met them, so that was really cool. We learned some songs in Polish, which we probably didn't sing correctly, but we had a lot of fun with them anyways. The event surely brought young people closer to the Lord as they went deeper into their Catholic faith. It's amazing just seeing Jesus up there and everyone, like millions of people, are adoring him. It just uh, sets my spiritual life aflame once more. And just I'm ready to go back home and tell my siblings all about it and making sure they're being mentored by myself or by my other older siblings, making sure we're taking care of them, getting them to confession, and just being a good brother uh, and helping them grow in their faith from this experience. Just to see the joy of the Holy Spirit through all the teens, it was really inspirational and it really like, did um, physically prove through our youth that we are one holy Catholic and apostolic church, and it was an amazing experience. I can't wait to meet all the teens in um, World Youth Day 2019. At the end of World Youth Day Krakow, the Holy Father announced that the next will take place in 2019 in Panama, encouraging more youth to begin an adventure of mercy and set the world on fire. Switzerland does not build walls or fences, but bridges and tunnels. These were the words of Swiss Bishop Felix Gamor of Basel this week in celebration of Swiss National Day, which annually marks the foundation of the Swiss Confederacy. The bishops of the country gave an official message for the holiday from the famed St. Gothard Base Tunnel, an important symbol of the identity of Switzerland. The construction of the Gothard Road and Rail Tunnel that cuts through the Swiss Alps is not only a feat of engineering, but also an expression of the successful dialogue between cultures and religions. Bishop Gumor said it's a place where peoples and cultures connect. The Goddard Road Tunnel is one of the three tunnels that connect the Swiss Plateau to southern Switzerland through a major pass of the Alps. The bishop pointed out that the building of the tunnel included the cooperation of people of different confessions under the umbrella of a common vision calling it an expression of successful dialogue, unlike the biblical Tower of Babel. Instead, Bishop Gamora called it a Swiss Sinai, a mountain that connects people to their roots. The bishop also pointed out the namesake of the mountain range, the medieval holy Gothard of Hildesheim, which means strong in God. With this, we remember that God does not separate but is how we all are connected as his beloved sons and daughters. This week, the Diocese of Nequin in Argentina marks Latin American Martyrs' Day, remembering the 40th anniversary of the death of Bishop Enrique Angelelli of La Roja. Archbishop Angelelli was one of the most renowned bishops in the country for being vocal against the Argentine military government dictatorship. He was killed in a simulated car accident soon after the military dictatorship took power. Seven years later, Bishop de Navarres of Nequin denounced the act as a crime of the dictatorship, despite authorities insisting that Bishop Angelelli's death was accidental. Thus, 38 years after the bishop's death on July 4th of 2014, two high-ranking officers were finally found guilty of his murder. The diocesan phase of his beatification opened in 2015. The papal nuncio Archbishop Emil Tsereg and Bishop Colombo of La Roja celebrated a solemn mass attended by thousands in a chapel dedicated to the late bishop in honor of the 40th anniversary of the murder of Bishop Angelelli, remembering, quote, his total commitment to God and his people, his quest for peace in keeping with the gospel, and always with justice, truth, and democracy, where there is sincere respect for everyone. The Coptic Orthodox Church is mobilizing against illiteracy. In Egypt, more than one in four people are illiterate. And out of 179 countries, Egypt ranks as having the 142nd highest illiteracy rate. The pilot experiment of the new campaign for literacy started in the parish of St. John in the village of Juna in the governorate of Asut. Father Karas Badri announced basic courses for both young and elderly illiterate, noting that radical ignorance is an essential ingredient to the development of extremism and sectarianism. In the words of Pope Francis, 
True education enables us to love life and opens us to the fullness of life. We've always known that Pope Francis is a big soccer fan, and this month his general prayer intention focuses especially on the topic of sports. That sports may be an opportunity for friendly encounters between peoples and may contribute to peace in the world. And with the start of the Olympics in Rio at this week's Wednesday public audience, the Holy Father gave a message that spoke to the heart of athletes, as well as to those who'll be in the stands, or even those watching the Olympics. In a world that thirsts for peace, tolerance, and reconciliation, I hope that the spirit of the Olympic Games will inspire everyone, participants and spectators, to fight the good fight and finish the race together. That they will desire to achieve not only a medal as a reward, but something much more valuable, the creation of a civilization where solidarity reigns based on the recognition that we are all members of one human family, regardless of differences in culture, skin color, or religion. The Holy Father also spoke especially to Brazilians, the hosts of the games, who are engaging in what he called teamwork, to build a better country with hope and joy, hoping that the games would serve as a way to overcome difficulties and differences. In Belgium, in the northeast town of Lanikin, Father Jos van der Lee was attacked in his home by a refugee who first asked if he could use the priest's shower, stating that he planned to apply for asylum in Belgium. After he showered, the man demanded money and then attacked the priest, stabbing him and injuring his hands and tendons. Father van der Lee, age 65, is expected to recover. Father van der Lee is celebrating the 40th anniversary of his priesthood this year and is currently responsible for eight local parishes. Let us pray especially for the protection of our priests to carry on the work of Christ in a world which needs him so much. It's a tradition that's been uninterrupted for 1,500 years. And again, this year, 20,000 pilgrims climbed Crowpatrick, a 2,510-foot mountain called Ireland's Holy Mountain and an annual pilgrimage which marks Reek Sunday, commemorating St. Patrick's Christianization of the pagans. The mountain which dominates the landscape of the southwest county Mayo, both spiritually and physically, is where the saint fasted for 40 days in the 5th century. Archbishop Michael Neary of Tuam led the national Reek Sunday pilgrimage, joined by Archbishop Charles Brown, apostolic nuncio to Ireland, who preached this year's Crowpatrick homily, saying, for Catholic Christians, the mountains are something more than a place of beauty and refreshment and renewal. Mountains are places where we come in contact with the mystery of God. In the Old Testament, it is on the mountain of Sinai that Moses encounters the unspeakable majesty of God and receives the Ten Commandments. In the New Testament, on the new mountain, the mountain of the Beatitudes, the disciples of Jesus receive from him the new law of love. On the summit, the Sacrament of Reconciliation was available so pilgrims could be relieved of their burden of sin. Thirteen Masses were also celebrated on the summit. Crowpatrick has over 100,000 visitors annually, and many make the pilgrimage barefooted as a form of penance. As we also move ever upwards towards our ultimate destination of heaven, let us remember the inspiring prayer of St. Patrick. Christ beside me. Christ before me, Christ behind me, Christ within me, Christ beneath me, Christ above me. Coming up next, we'll go up close with Maria Vargo, an actress in Los Angeles who's dedicating her talents to sharing the riveting story of St. Faustina Kowalska and divine mercy with the world. Right here in Rome, we'll visit the largest Marian shrine in the Eternal City, celebrating a special feast remembering a miraculous snowfall in the 4th century that arrived in the dead of August summer heat. And in techno, we'll check out a new app introduced at World Youth Day that puts the gems of Catholic social teaching right at your fingertips. Media is powerful. It can change a culture. It can change a whole generation. It can impact the entire globe. Two years ago, Shalom World TV was a dream. Today, it's a reality. A commercial-free, high-definition television network 
broadcasting from the United States of America, reaching 375 million English-speaking people around the globe. We want to reach to the ends of the earth. Throughout the year, Shalom missionaries work day and night to accomplish this mission, to produce programs that evangelize the culture. What is wrong with Connor's Tonight on Seekers. I can make time for you. For divine knowledge. We want to continue this mission. We want to produce more programs to impact this generation positively. Will you be with us? Can you take a commitment of donating just $25 a month for the next 12 months? We assure you of our prayers. Visit shalomworld.org slash donate today. We thank you for your generosity. More headline news. This week, a special summer camp was held in Siena, Italy, whose theme was mercy and love. The camp is for disabled youth, who, thanks to the help of volunteers, for one week straight play games, do activities, and enjoy summer fun in an atmosphere of friendship and laughter. It's sponsored by the Order of the Knights of Malta, and this year marks the fifth anniversary of the camp in Italy, where 42 guests and 90 volunteers between the ages of 18 and 35 came together to make it happen. So all the youth in Italy can, can come to the camp and learn how to help each other, grow up together, and uh, have fun. The Knights also sponsor an international camp held in a different country each year. But the idea of an annual Italian camp was born as a grassroots project and is meant to pave a way for participants to grow, to learn more about themselves and about how far they can stretch themselves. And for some volunteers, that's exactly why they keep coming back. Because it is a very active way of, care, of caring about people. Allora, è un'esperienza molto bella. It's a beautiful experience. It's a time where people with all different types of abilities can be together and have fun and not think of anything. They can leave all of their problems at home and not pack them in their suitcases, but instead enjoy a time to laugh, to be together, and have fun. The camp runs on God's providence with outside donors supplying for the camp needs in whatever way they can. Whenever the camp has a particular need, organizers say the Lord sends just the right person to supply things, like mattresses, tents, refrigerators, and food. Even the location was donated, and this year it was held on the beautiful grounds of a family's private castle in Tuscany. But not only the guests' lives are changed by the summer camp, Barbara recounted a conversation with one volunteer who said, She'd never be the same after the experience. And she said, uh, I'm absolutely grateful that I can help you because probably alone I, I can't do something. Probably because I'm afraid or because I don't know the way how to help someone else. And you gave me uh, the way to help someone else. So it's easier giving help not ask. So we would like that all youth uh, learn how to help and how to ask it so they can help with each other. The Knights of Malta is a Roman Catholic lay religious order founded as the Knights Hospitaller in 1099 in Jerusalem. It's the world's oldest surviving chivalric order and its mission is summed up in its motto, Tutsio Fide et Obesquum Paparum, protecting the Roman Catholic Church and serving those in need. This summer camp promotes that mission, especially with the theme of this year's camp during the Jubilee of Mercy, Merciful as the Father is. Pope Francis has spoken many times reminding the world of the value of all human life and levels of abilities, saying all life has inestimable value. And the weakest, the most vulnerable, the sick, the old, the unborn, and the poor are masterpieces of God's creation, made in his own image, destined to live forever, and deserving of the utmost reverence and respect. Polish-born St. Faustina Kowalska, known as a messenger of mercy, was one of the saints in the spotlight during World Youth Day. And during his time in Krakow, Pope Francis paid a visit to the Sanctuary of Divine Mercy and prayed before the tomb of this great saint. Over the decades, the incredible story of St. Faustina and Divine Mercy has resonated with so many hearts. 
And so St. Luke Productions in Washington State found a way to bring that fantastic story to life through the arts. The 90-minute live drama called Faustina, Messenger of Divine Mercy, has traveled the U.S. for nearly three years, bathing countless souls in God's unending mercy along the way. Voice of the Vatican spoke to the featured actress in the one-woman show, Maria Vargo, about why this message of mercy from a simple Polish nun who died in 1938 is so important for us today. I think that Jesus chose St. Faustina, as he said, to be the secretary and messenger of his mercy. And this message of mercy was so important to be shared that he chose St. Faustina. And so for me, whenever people say, oh, do you love getting to play the saint? And it's really for me about sharing the message of God's mercy. Our world is hurting so much right now and people need to know that there is nothing that is too great for God to forgive and that he desperately wants each and every one of us to come to him. And that, when I was thinking about doing the role, that's what really drew me to it was that I had received God's mercy in my own life and I wanted to share that message. And playing the role of the saint, has had a strong personal effect on Maria as well. Every night when I get to play her, the most beautiful thing is that the love that she had for our Lord. She loved him so much. And this is what, um, you know, I try to communicate with my heart and mind. And, and if I could just, me, Maria, take that little bit, just a tiny percent of that away into my own daily life, um, it's a blessing. So to portray the saint is a challenge because I always say it's it's easy to be a saint for an hour and a half every night but it's the rest of our lives that we have to, to strive to be a better person. The drama tells of Faustina's personal encounters with Jesus which have inspired a worldwide devotion to Christ's divine mercy. A parallel modern story within the play offers audiences compelling connections to the current moral issues of contemporary times. And in her role, Maria has a front row seat to see how this powerful message changes hearts. One of my favorite stories is of a woman who was in her 60s and had seen the show. And she contacted me out of the blue. She said that so many different things in the show resonated with her heart, that she had had all these wounds in her life and her past and things that she hadn't told her husband hadn't been to confession. And she said, after the show, I knew what I had to do. And she said, I went to confession and I told uh, the priest, you know, these things that I had hold, held on to. And she said, I knew that I had been forgiven. I knew that I had received the mercy of God in that moment. And she said that her life would never be the same after that. That's just one small story, but there's there's so many stories. I. A priest wrote to me the other day, and he, he said, never stop doing this. He said, the power of this show is greater than any homily that I will give on mercy. And when I read those words, I just cried because I'm humbled um, to be a part of such a powerful show that brings the message of God's mercy and his love to people in such a real and palpable way. And time and time again, what people tell me is that this is a, a life-changing experience for them. So I'm pretty grateful to God to be a part of it. You can see the full-length interview with actress Maria Vargo at www.shalomworldtv.org slash VOV. St. Mary Major Basilica is one of the four major basilicas in the city of Rome. And on August 5th each year, the church celebrates the feast of the dedication of this basilica. And when in the 4th century, in the dead of the heat of a Roman August summer, a miraculous snowfall marked the outline of where the basilica was to be built. That miracle of the snow is commemorated annually during the liturgical feast of the dedication of the basilica. When at the conclusion of the solemn mass, the ceiling of the church is opened and a shower of white rose petals is dropped from the dome of the Chapel of Our Lady. The story of the founding of the basilica goes back to the 4th century pontificate of Pope Liberius. It's said that a Roman patrician named Giovanni and his wife made a personal vow to donate their possessions to the Blessed Virgin Mary. 
They prayed that she might make it known to them how they were meant to do that in her honor. On the night of August 5th, Our Lady appeared to the couple and separately to Pope Liberius, asking them to build a basilica, promising that she would make known to them the exact spot. That night, at the height of the excruciatingly hot and humid Roman summer, snow miraculously fell on the summit of the Esquiline Hill in Rome. They used the outline of the snow to create the outline for the foundation of the basilica that's now known as St. Mary Major. It's the only one of the four major basilicas in Rome whose foundation has never been altered. St. Mary Major is the first Western basilica to be dedicated to the Mother of God. And it's to this church that Pope Francis comes before and after each of his apostolic voyages to give thanks to Our Lady for her maternal protection. The falling rose petals represent Our Lady's purity of heart and soul, which we all strive for, and are a symbol of the many graces that Our Lady of the Snows generously showers on the faithful. There are whole new ways to boost your prayer power with digital technology. Now it's time for Techno. At World Youth Day, amongst the 50 cardinals, 800 bishops, and 20,000 priests from around the world who attended was Cardinal Luis Antonio Tagle of the Philippines, who took a moment during the event to announce to pilgrims what he called a special gift from the Holy Father. It's a digital gift called Ducat a mobile app that enables young people to have easy access to documents on the church's social teachings. Since the Cardinal said, quote, faith is completed with deeds which build a civilization of love. What is Ducat? C'è la parola di Gesù, c'è la parola della Chiesa, c'è la parola di tanta gente, tanta gente. È molto importante. Many people aren't aware of the church's treasury of teaching on the Catholic social teaching. And Cardinal Tagle said the Ducat app is Pope Francis' gift to young people to help them uncover that treasure. It also features a foreword by the Holy Father. Tengo un sogno. My dream is to have a million young Christians, or better, a whole generation to embody the Church's social teaching by their lives. This is why the Ducat exists. The Ducat is the personal gift of Pope Francis to all the young pilgrims of the World Youth Day. The app is an offshoot of the Youth Catechism of the Catholic Church, designed after UCAT, a 2011 publication that aims to help young people understand the Catechism of the Catholic Church. Cardinal Tagle said Ducat will help guide the youth in conscience formation and gospel-based action on social issues, such as politics, economics, the family, the environment, and work life, amongst others. The app also encourages interaction by allowing readers to start groups and participate in discussions. The prelate said young people are a mirror of the present world that is wounded, afraid, insecure, and very much confused. And so, in response, the Church wants to spread the good news using modern means of communication and to set the world on fire, helping young people sort through what can be complicated social issues by bringing the world the power of the Word of Jesus Christ. This week's Tweet of the Week comes from the President of the United States Conference of Catholic Bishops, Archbishop Joseph Kurtz of Louisville, Kentucky who pointed to words of the Holy Father, saying, Pope Francis told World Youth Day pilgrims that they are worthy of God's love and never far from his thoughts. The words of Pope Francis surely echo the theme of divine mercy. God loves us the way we are, and no sin, fault, or mistake of ours makes him change his mind. These are certainly powerful words of reflection during this jubilee of mercy. All week long, you can keep up with the latest happenings in Rome on our Twitter feed, which is at Voice of Vatican. And be sure to like us on Facebook on our Voice of the Vatican page. Keep checking our social media feeds for breaking news and information about upcoming guests and features. And we want to hear your voice, too. Email your questions and stories to us at vov at shalomworld.org. This is Ashley Narona, and on behalf of the entire staff and crew of Voice of the Vatican, I wish you a blessed week and blessed Feast of the Transfiguration. 
saying ciao for now from the Eternal City. I'll see you next week on Voice of the Vatican, only on Shalom World TV, bringing Rome to your home.